Adjusterpedia.com. Hey guys, it's Mark from Adjusterpedia.com. Today I'm going to discuss scope sheets, why and how to use them, as well as ways to make them better. If you like this video for me and leave me a note in the comments telling me that you did so, I'll send you a digital copy of my scope sheets so you can use any way you want. So let's get right into this. So when I get a claim in, the first thing I do with that claim is to go in and print it off. And what I'll do is I'll print the claim information that I get from exact analysis on one side, and then I'll put that piece of paper back in my printer, flipped over, and I will print out my scope sheet on the other side. That way when I get there, I have all the information on one sheet. I know some people like to use one for their roof and one for their interiors and one for the sheds. Well, that's way too much for me. I just like one scope sheet and I like it to be on the back side of my insured details. I'll talk really briefly about why you should use them if you do not have a perfect memory. I tried a couple of times just to take pictures of the scope and thought, oh yeah, I'll remember this. And uh, you get back and you're trying to label pictures and you have no idea what you're even doing. You'll, you'll think something is damaged that's not, or you'll think something's not damaged that is. Let me just say this, if you're not using a scope sheet, you're probably not doing as good a job as you can be. I'm currently running two different versions of the scope sheet. I have one where I have an interior that I'm sure I'm going to have an interior damage. Then I have another one where I know I'm going to have another structure damage. If I don't have either, I'll generally just print whichever on the other side. And you know, sometimes you're going to have three or four bedrooms or whatever that are damaged, or you might have four or five other structures, but I like to have at least just one in here because it's more times than not it's going to be adequate. So let's just go from the beginning. I'll use, this is my other structures version, and then I'll show you the other one. They're very similar. So most of the times when I show up to a property, I will have already filled in at age of the roof and which way it's facing. Some people don't care about which way it's facing. I tend to do it just because some people do. The way I have this designed is to sort of work like a checklist, and then I just kind of go through and hit everything as I go. So when I get there, most of the time I'm going to do the roof first, unless I have a reason not to. Once I step onto the roof, after I've gotten gutter down, when I step onto the roof, and I before I start marking all the rest of these, I'm going to go up and do my overview shots. And the reason I have this set up this way is when I get up to the top, I'm going to take overviews of the roof before I start doing the rest. So. What this is for is how many shots I take. So if I have two, two of the front, three of the right, two of the back, and three of the left, that way when I go to label my pictures, I know exactly how many, and I can just say, you know, because sometimes you look at it and you, you don't know. You, you think you know, but you might not. Uh, now, as a rule, another tip I like to do personally is I like to do two per. If I can get away with it, I'm going to do two front, two right, two back, two left, and then I'll just put RO2 here instead of putting each one. I'll put roof overview two, RO2. And that's a little code for me just to know that I've done two shots of each one. And so once I'm done doing my overviews, that's when I come in and I start counting my stuff. And from the top working down, generally it works this way. I check my drip edge. Does it have it? Yes or no? I circle that. Shingle layers, I put it to one. It's got two, whatever it is. Then I'll do the pitch. The first pitch when I get up there, I usually throw it there. And sometimes I won't do the others, and other times I will. As you work your way down, is it a 30 or I just circle it. Is it 5 inch or a 6 inch gutter? I just check mark. Does it have paint? I do a check mark. So you get the idea through here. Does it have pipe jacks? Um, yes or whatever. Do I have Valley Metal W? Check mark yes. How many pipe jacks do I have? Do I have turtle vents and how many? Are they plastic? Are they metal? And I just circle or check mark or put a number by whatever. Ridge cap, this is high performance or regular. Uh, ridge vent, most people know what the ridge vent is. And then uh, is there a dish? Does it need to detach and reset? Are there chimneys involved? Uh, if there is a chimney, I have a couple of systems I use here. If it has a chimney, I will just say it's an average chimney. I'm just going to underline it unless I find damage on the flashing, and then I'll circle it. That's just my own little cheat. Um, if I look at it and I see it's underlined, it says, yes, in fact, I did have an average size one, but there was no damage. If I circle it, it means it had damage. The chase and the cap, there sometimes will be two. That's why I have that. That way you could either put a check mark if it's one, or you could just put a number if it's two, or whatever it happens to be. Diverter, these are for rain diverters. Uh, so a lot of times you won't see people even add those to it, but it adds every little bit helps. So once I'm done with the roof, all of that's done, I'm going to definitely, before I get off the roof, I'm going to take a quick glance through here and look and see if I left anything blank. That way I know that maybe I should double check. What I'll personally do is if there's nothing, I'll just line it through and uh, 
you know, a lot of times, like, there won't be exhaust caps. I'll just throw a line through it so I know I at least checked. That way, when you leave the place, you can feel confident that you at least checked it. So then I get down from the roof, and I start my elevations. So I've got front here, and right, and rear, and left, and I bet that's pretty obvious. But what's maybe not obvious is when I get to an area, like right now, I've been seeing a lot of gutters and downspout damage, and that's what the G is for. G is for gutters, in my case. And I will just throw you know, 32 feet, or, or I might just do, if it's the whole front, the whole back, left, right, a lot of times I'll just do a check mark, or if I have a specific number, I'll throw, you know, 15 feet or whatever. Most of the time I'll just check the sketch after the fact, find out how many feet it was. And then downspouts, I leave the space ahead of it so I can say if it's a three or a four inch downspout. That way I'll say three, and then I'll put 15 plus six plus eight. So that, that's assuming there were three different downspouts on the front. And I like to differentiate that so I have an idea when I'm looking at my pictures, did I in fact measure for three or not? If I have three three numbers here, this plus this plus this, I know that I should have three pictures of downspout damage showing in the front elevation. And so I just work my way around it that way. But the only other thing I want to mention on this topic is that for me, as I move around the country or even different storms, you'll find different things keep popping up. And if that pops up, I just come in here and I'll add a line, let's just say... Let's say I just see a whole lot of vinyl siding damage. Well, I'll throw a VSD in here, like so. And then for now on, every time I see vinyl siding, I'll just either scratch it out or I'll put the number of feet or whatever it happens to be or a check mark for, for the whole thing. Or maybe I'll do a patch. I just do several different things. But uh, the more things you can add on here that you're seeing every day, then the, the quicker this will be for you to just add them. So right now, really, gutters and downspouts are the only things I just see really a lot. In some areas, you'll see just totally different things that you wouldn't expect to see on any given storm but you might get three out of five houses consistently doing a single thing so add it to this make it that much quicker so you don't have to write things down you can just simply put a check mark or a number or whatever it happens to be and it'll really save you a lot of time so we'll go on down here to the last part of this particular one it's the other structures it's all obvious just uh, it's just nice to have it and what I've done here is I've left a hole down here so I can draw that other structure I'll put uh, the, you know, the quick drawing if it's a which type of roof it is, and then I'll put the measurement as 15 feet across, whatever it happens to be. I'll throw my name here, other structure, say barn. Does it have drip edge? I'll circle it, yes or no. Shingle layers and the pitch, and of course, is which type of shingle it is. Obviously, if it's wood shake, I'll just put the WS or wood shake or whatever. Odds are, if it's wood shake, you're not going to forget, but you better put it just in case. Now, if I have, uh, say, another wood, other structure or just whatever else, I might throw the other one over here at the bottom. That's why I've got a little bit of extra space here. And I'll throw other structure. I'll just do OS shed, whatever like that. And then I'll just write drip edge or whatever. Because you can, I'll see, I'll put DE as what I actually do. But this gives me a really quick punch list to make sure I didn't forget anything. So that kind of sums that up. The only other thing I want to show you real quick is I'll let you see my interiors. And so everything else is the same up top, but when you come down to the interior, these are the things I like to have for sure, just me personally. And again, it depends on where you're at in the country. You start seeing a lot of a certain thing, you just add that line. So I'll put the room name, so say living room, and is it acoustic? I, I, in this case, what my personal thing is, let's say it's an acoustic ceiling. If it's damaged, I'm going to put 32 here, 32 feet or whatever the, the, you know, the foot uh, squared of damage it is. But let's just say there was no damage on the walls or on the floor. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little dash here with my pencil or pen, whatever I'm using, under walls, under paper. That way I know it had wallpaper or if it was textured, it's just a dash. That way that's what it was, but there was no damage. And when on the floor, let's just say it was carpet, I would put the dash here by carpet. That way I know that's what it was, but there was no damage. Were there lights? Were there recessed lights? Were there ceiling fans? And you know, you might see a lot of other stuff that you prefer to have there, but this is just a quick glance punch list for me to know that I'm not missing it. I take another look at this. Did I get it? Sure I did. Whatever. Uh, down here of course I just leave some space for a drawing. There you go. Just put it in there. And that's really all there is. Uh, so that's that's really what I've got. If you would like these I'm happy to share them with you. You can come in. They're in a word format. You can change them all you want. Just like this video for me and leave me a message down there saying hey could you send me those and I'll definitely get them to you. You, or you can even email me at the, the email address that's here below in the description. Hope that helps. Uh, good luck out there. 
Be sure to take a look in the description for more videos and playlists in our step-by-step -step claims process series. If you subscribe to the Adjusterpedia channel and leave me a comment below letting me know that you did, I will send you an updated list of over 70 IA firms in the United States with websites, physical address, and phone numbers so you can get on their deployment lists and start getting paid.